there's another one here um, on the question of John Paul II and the uh, kissing of the Quran. Um, what about John Paul II kissing the Quran? Will we do another video on that? Um, no, let, let's go ahead and tackle it now. Yeah, I, I don't think you can make a whole video out of it because it's mm -hmm. it was such a um, a quick, brief thing. Mm -hmm. So the problem is there's no documentation as to what Pope John Paul II thought when he did this. Mm -hmm. He just did it. So what was he thinking? And all we can do is speculate as to what may have been going through his mind. And there are a few possibilities. One possibility that, that I thought was very likely, Pope John Paul II was receiving a delegation from Iraq. Mm -hmm. So delegates from Iraq came to see him. And in this delegation, there were religious leaders, some of whom were Christian, some of whom were Muslim. So there's this combination of people coming to see him. You have, you know, Chaldean Christians, you know, Chaldean Catholics, and then you have Muslims, you know, like mm -hmm. Sunni Muslims, and they're all there together. And, you know, when you have a group of people in front of you from different traditions, you might be confused as to who is who. So somebody's handing him a ornate book. He may think this is one of the Christian delegates handing him a gospel book. Um, I think that's a very likely possibility that, that somebody put a book in his face. He knew he was just talking to the, you know, a, a patriarch a moment earlier. It wouldn't be illogical to think that somebody was giving him a gospel book. Um, I think that's a very likely possibility, but we don't know for sure what he was thinking. He may have just been in the habit of, of, of kissing gifts because sometimes people believe that in Middle Eastern cultures, you receive a gift, gift, a gift by kissing it. That isn't really true, but that's a belief that seems to be out there somewhere. He may have thought that was the proper thing to do was to kiss it. He may have been aware it was a Quran and he may have been kissing it just to show uh, gratitude without necessarily meaning he agreed with everything in it. Um, but again, we don't know his mind. He never answered a question mm -hmm. about that. Mm -hmm. So all we can say is speculation. Would I say that he should be, you know, immediately excommunicated and apostatized for kissing a Quran? No, no. Um, like I said, he may not have been aware it was a Quran. And even if he was, he may have just been kissing it reflexively. Or, you know, he may have been trying to show respect for the elements of truth in it. Mm -hmm. It's hard to say. But wouldn't that give, again, the a, a wrong impression? You know, wouldn't it give people the impression that he's revering the fact that it denies that Jesus is the son of God? Yes, absolutely. That would give people the wrong impression. My suspicion is whatever happened there, he didn't think a whole lot before doing it. Mm -hmm. I think he was acting reflexively, whether or not he was aware of what the book actually was. Did, but like did I he said, if, oh, if you ahead. attend Eastern liturgies and, you know, like you do, Michael, mm -hmm. books are put in people's faces all the time right? Mm -hmm. Gospel books all the time. Uh, you know, at the divine liturgy, at the great, at the little entrance, I come through and there's a whole line of altar boys and people there. And I, you know, I line up and they all, I put the gospel book in their faces and they all kiss it. Mm -hmm. Same thing after reading the gospel, people are kissing the gospel book. So if he's with a delegate delegation, there's a lot of Eastern Christians, uh, and he's familiar with their services. If you're in an Eastern Christian environment and somebody puts a book in your face, what you do is kiss it. Mm -hmm. That's probably what he was thinking. Did he ever come back and clarify, you know, hey, here's what happened. Here's, you know, what I intended, stuff like that. Not that I could find. And that seems to be an issue in and of itself, in, in my opinion. Um, because if he was ignorant of what it was, it would be helpful to come out and say that. And if he wasn't and he knew it was a Quran then it would be helpful to come out and say why he still did it, right? So either way, it seems like he should say something. Maybe, maybe not. You know, here's the thing. If you respond to your critics, <laughs> it's like feeding the troll. Sure. You know this all too well, I'm sure. Oh, I know, I know. <laughs> and, and a lot of people take the position that they're just not going to respond to their critics. I get that. Um, and that may have been where he was coming from. I get that. I get that. But I would say, but in this case, for the sake of all the people who aren't his critics, who are confused. See, you know, I, I totally get not responding to the critics, 
But there's so many others who who love John Paul II that were confused from this. And and I think, well, for their sake, one should say something, not for, you know, maybe the critics. But then, then again, maybe let's say he did it by accident. He mm-hmm. didn't know what it was. Uh, maybe in his mind, well, it happened. I can't undo it. Mm-hmm. But maybe something good will come out of it, which was in the Muslim world, people interpreted this as him showing respect for Islam. Mm-hmm. And maybe he saw that as something positive that came out of it, even if it was unintentional. Mm-hmm. I think we cleared out the uh, questions there. Uh, did you have any concluding comments? Anything that we missed there? Yeah, I, I do want to point something out here. Mm-hmm. So in the last video, we talked about the, uh, the Pachamama incident, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. In this video, we talked about the Assisi situation. Mm-hmm. Um, but there's a, a major difference between the two events which was the Pachamama situation was a misinterpretation of Christians who were praying. Mm-hmm. Right. So what we saw with the so-called Pachamama event um, were Catholic Christians from the Amazon praying to our God in a way that seems foreign to most people in the West. And mm-hmm. people assumed it was pagan or demonic. And the story began that it was an idol. Somebody gave her the name Pachamama. I'm not sure where they even came up with that because it was not Pachamama. I think a reporter used that term and is kind of stuck. Mm-hmm. But in this situation here, these really were non-Christians. Um, mm-hmm. So, you know, we have to be, be aware of those kind of differences. Um, there are situations where there are non-Christians praying to non-Christian deities. And there are situations where there are Catholic Christians praying in a way that's Catholic, but unfamiliar to us. So we have to kind of be aware of which is which. Yeah, Carlos says um, he could have thought it was an Arabic gospel book. It's so obvious. I can't believe I didn't think of it before. I guess that shows my cultural ignorance and how I've been propagandized by pop narratives. I've, I've heard it before, too. Um, I just it seems like there's just no evidence either way for what exactly it was and what he thought it was. Right. This is what I would say, though, is it looked if, if I saw it in that context, I would immediately think it was a gospel book. Mm hmm. That'd be my assumption because it looks just like a gospel book. Hey, thanks for watching. Don't forget to hit the like button and the subscribe button. God bless.